All right, guys, welcome back to uh, What's Up. And today, uh, in episode two of What's Up, I've got Pastor Mark joining me today as we continue in some of these uh, digital series that we got going. Hope you guys have been tuning in and checking those out uh, here on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Um, We're excited to uh, have Mark with us today as we talk a little bit about uh, faith and particularly faith uh, in frustrating times. I think... um, I think it may be safe to say we've all experienced some frustrations over the last five months or so, uh, and not particularly at any specifics. We could spend time probably doing that, but more in general, overall, uh, just with how things, you know, th- to be fair, this is a global pandemic that is uh, new to everyone, right? And so we've all kind of had to learn and grow probably in areas that we we really needed to, but we um, maybe had put off or w- weren't trying to grow in those areas right away. And so maybe God's using that as an opportunity to kind of um, lead us uh, into a new uh, position of faith or place of our faith, expanding our faith. So, um, Mark, let's talk a little bit about faith during frustrating times. How is, you know, would you say your faith has played a role? Just let's look at the last five months as as the pandemic started, as the this global health crisis came on, um, where, is, where is faith kind of played a role in in that in particular. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about it because you and I talked a few hours earlier about, you know, that we were going to do this. And and I think where, for me, um, you know, I I think back to when I was a runner and and when I could see a finish line, no matter how tired I was, I still had a kick left, right? Because you knew that that finish line. And, and, And I think just remembering that there is a, a, a greater finish line coming, yeah. you know, that, <laughs> yeah. that you know, and, and I was got a chance to, to talk about Philippians, you know, last week, and we talked about that heavenly citizenship. So I think just that, that, you know, that looking forward to, to yeah, there's absolutely. something greater, yeah, right? Yeah, that longing for what is the calm. I, I, yeah, I know in any type of exercise, knowing that it's going to be over, yeah. <laughs> and you know that that <laughs> clock is either ticking down or that that uh, checkered flag is in front of you is always a refreshing, comforting, uh, secure feeling, right? That, you know, this this there is an end coming to this, and yeah. we have the ultimate end coming. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, like what we're doing in exercise is good for us but not as good as this. Right. So, right. so you know, as good as it is, when you ask about that faith, that faith that, that God's there, and, and, and one of the things I wrote down, eight, Romans 8.31, is, is if God's for me, who can be against me? Right, no matter what. Yeah, so I have to remember that. And I think, Rick, the quicker I go to God in frustrating times, the better off I am. Right, yeah, I mean, how often have we gotten frustrated, you know, whether it's inside of this, you know, pandemic health crisis or prior to this, you know, things in life, family, work, whatever it might be, and frustration comes, where do we go first? You know, where's our first, where do we move first? You know, is it towards God or is it towards self trying to figure things out or, or, you know, or, or is it towards others, you know, or towards things, that right. type of thing. And the, 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 mature, the maturity in our life, we hope, is going to, uh, over time, lead us as our first step to, towards God, right? We hope. <laughs> we hope. I, I still have those, uh, those days, you know, where I let it weigh on me. And, and, and uh, you know, the truth is it's, it's heavy emotionally and it's heavy physically. Yeah. And, and God's going, just give it to me. Right. You know, right. give me your burdens. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd wrote a question down, at, you know, in those times and days that you've thought about, you know, look back on your life where you've been frustrated, how faith has, you know, played a role in that. And it, and it seems like, you know, for, for you, it's hopefully growing you in the in the movement or the, you know, the, the leaning in towards God and, and not away from you. Not like sometimes I think we have, uh, unfortunately, this, we, we turn our frustrations towards God. Like it's almost like it's God's fault, right? right? Absolutely. And like he did this, you know, you caused this, this is all you and, and, and real, you know, instead of, so instead of leaning in, we kind of lean away, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, God, I, I prayed and it's been five minutes and nothing's happened, <laughs> right? Yeah. That, that short, uh, short attention span and that, you know, we want instant gratification, right? Um, are there any specific, you know, I know you, you mentioned Romans, but are there any other books or passages or verses that you've relied on um, that have really become highlighted maybe through uh, the, you know, the time that we've been in the last five months? 
I, I like Matthew 11, um, and it's in verse 28, 29, and it's just, it's talking about when Jesus, you know, tells us, he says, you know, when you get tired and frustrated, and it's not if you get tired and frustrated, but when. And, and I think, you know, frustration is coming to all of us. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. And, and so he says, but he says, when you get that way and you're ready to give up, and he, and he says this, he says, come to me and I will give you comfort. Mm. Yeah. And, and I think that's just so, you know, that's, that's huge, right? Either right. I believe that or I don't. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I do, and, and, and it does. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's been, I don't know, that's just something to fall back on. And, and um, you know, I, I'll be honest, there's been days when we're trying to get, you know, outside, you know, with sports ministry, we're trying to get fields ready and, you know, the lawnmower doesn't crank and the gas is gone and the uh, uh, sprinkler system's not working. And <laughs> Mark, just... don't tell everybody all the things that are <laughs> happening out on our campus. Let's, uh, one yeah. thing at a time here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and immediately... <laughs> I'm going, you know, all right, God, I'm going to slow down now. And, uh, and it, it, you know, and it, it gets better. Have you noticed, I mean, I, I, you know, my confession, I guess, is, uh, and I think I've maybe gotten a little better at this, but there was certainly a time um, in my life where I was so easily frustrated. I, I found yeah. myself, and then I, then I got frustrated with myself that I was so easily frustrated at, you know, things or at people or at circumstances. And then it just compounded that I was e- just frustrated all around and I had to put myself kind of in the corner. Like, you need to yeah. take a breath, step away, you know, you need to you know, maybe sit down, talk to God, have a conversation, you know, with the one who's in control. Don't lean away from him, lean into him. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah I, I think when I was younger, I looked for reasons to be frustrated. <laughs> you, you, you know you what wanted I mean? to, you know, to yeah, find those areas. Yeah. Those You're places, like, yeah. you know, I, I want to be mad right now, <laughs> which is so stupid. But, but yeah, I think, I think just, you know, just growing up, maturing and, you know, and, and just realizing that God's got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, a couple of verses that come to mind. I mean, obviously, I love I love what Jesus reminds us of with peace. You know, John sixteen thirty three. He talks about you know He gives us this peace, not as the world gives, but um, what He gives, which we know and what we you know usually call a supernatural peace. And you know, He He says you know you might have trouble in this world. You know, more or less, you're going to have trouble, which you know, we could think about frustration inside of that too. There's going to be things that frustrate us within the world, things that we do or things that are done to us. And but Jesus. Says, but listen, I've overcome this. I've overcome that. And I think that's such a comforting, um, a comforting verse that helps us in the moments of, of frustration um, that our faith can kind of overcome that. Galatians six nine. Um, I'll just you know read this. Uh, this has been kind of a a ministry verse for for me and I, and for our for our staff or our church. You know, I've shared it in the, in years past with, and I think it's one that probably all you know people in ministry kind of lean on or lean into um and and paul writes he says in in chapter 6 verse 9 he says and let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up and Mm -hmm. i i love just that that comfort you know even in the frustration and and when we talk about frustration we're talking about frustration in all areas of life and um, we're not immune to frustration being in church leadership or or, you know (laughs) uh, or you know in in what we are been given to do um, by God but when we read that verse you know that uh, hopefully uh, applies to all Christians but especially you know, especially for us, I think sometimes the frustration um, within our roles because we just want to to see God glorified. We want to see lives transformed, and we just, you know we want to see families connected and growing um, in that. And and so just hearing Paul say, "Hey, listen, don't don't give up. Don't grow weary when you're frustrated. Don't don't stop doing the good work that you're doing. Know that it will you know it will come. The, the reward, the reaping will come." Um, I think so. I think about that verse. I think about actually. Um, when we thought about this topic, when we were putting you know this this what's up episode together, Habakkuk came to mind, um, a, a minor prophet in the Old Testament. Um, I, that that quick short little book, which I've had the opportunity to teach a couple times um, in in our church, um, Habakkuk. It, I think we can just relate, you know, in Habakkuk one uh, chapter one, the very first opening of his complaint. You know, in chapter one, we have 
Habakkuk's complaint to God, and he's complaining about you know the things that are going on, like where's the justice, where's the uh, you know you see this iniquity, and what are you doing? Where are you? You're not you know there's this destruction and violence and all of these things. The law is paralyzed. He just has this huge you know complaint in four verses, and um, God responds to his complaint, and the way God responds is incredibly powerful. We don't have time to go through the whole book, but when I think about this, some of the frustrations that happen we look on a global scale we look around us we just wonder at times and and maybe we allow our wondering to become you know or let us be frustrated because of it I think I relate to Habakkuk because um, in chapter one after God answers that complaint he has a second complaint and then God's going to answer again and speak to Habakkuk again and then you get to the last you know chapter of Habakkuk when you go into chapter Three, um, you see Habakkuk's whole kind of demeanor and tone and life kind of switch over, um, and he begins this prayer. And I want to read the last three verses of chapter three because this is where he ends. You know, he starts with this complaint, mm-hmm. but he ends um, with this rejoicing. And he says, though the fig tree should not blossom nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. So he basically paints a picture of total frustration, total frustration, right? Like everything is, you know, you're going to be frustrated because there's not like total devastation, total, you know, lack and all this, which, you know, probably moves past frustration to despair, but. But he says in verse 18, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. And God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on the high places. I mean, I love just the the progression of Habakkuk's. And this is not his whole life captured in this book, but it's a part of his life captured, right? And I love the progression that he moves through um, and um, out of kind of this this frustrating dip in life, and he doesn't try to go back because you can't change the things that are behind you, and you can't go back to those things. And I kind of think about us with what's happened over the last five, six months that we've kind of moved through that, and, and we're coming up to and God's going to lead us into you know, a new a new place, you know, maybe a new mountaintop, a new pasture, and to to continue to maintain that rejoicing um, with God no matter what. Comes. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, I think one of the things I, I want to say thank you to you is that what you've led us through is what can we do? We, we, we quit talking about what we couldn't do, and it's, okay, well, what can we do? You know, we've got this time. We've got the chance to experiment. We've got the chance to get better. What can we do? Right. And that's been really, I mean, that's that's just a great way to look at, at this time. And Yeah, I mean, I, I think so many, uh, you know, anybody in a leadership position early on that's all you could focus on was what you couldn't do right what you you know the things that are being taken or removed or or settled and and a lot of it was the right decisions in an effort to save life and all that and I'm not I'm not uh, debating that but I think there had to be a shifting at at a point where because if we lived in that for for any longer my fear would have been more of our mental health you know than uh, maybe even the physical health just because of that being in that kind of place of uh, of you can't do um, and we're kind of made to do right to move mm-hmm. forward and so we did have to have that shift and okay we can't do everything and we can't do what we used to do but we can do something and what is that and you know I would say our staff went to work and um, we, you know, and our church has responded incredibly graciously and, and faithfully, which we couldn't say enough about our church family for that. Um, been incredibly um, supportive and unified. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's what's up. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out with us for another episode of What's Up. Uh, we'll uh, catch you next week. Make sure you uh, sign up for services on Sunday. See you soon.